Good morning, everybody. I'm Broward County Commissioner Stacy Ritter here um, with another Coffee with Stacy. As, uh, as we did with the last one, we've decided we're going to sort of go on location, as we say in the business. Um, we're going all Hollywood on, on the District 3 residents. And um, we're on location today at the Coral Springs Marriott, which happens to be in District 3, which is a district that I'm privileged to represent on the Broward County Commission. And we're here today to talk about the Electric Vehicle Stakeholder Summit, which is hosted by the South Florida Regional Planning Council, Florida Power and Light, the Treasure and the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council. And today's guest is Christine Hishmati, who is the coordinator for the Florida Gold Coast Clean Cities Coalition and the Senior Policy Analysis and Analyst for the South Florida Regional Planning Council. I want to thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Um, as always, you can watch this on YouTube, and um, after it goes viral. I'll be tweeting it and Facebooking it as well and you can reach me at Stacey Ritter on my Twitter account if you want to see this and we'll be putting it on um, the web as well and we'll send it out via email. If you're interested in, in getting emails from us, my email address is sritter at broward.org and you can always reach me at 954-357-7003. Okay, that commercial's out <laughs> of the way. Um, so let's talk about the Electric Vehicle Stakeholder Summit. What is that? Well, basically, we are uh, kicking off this fall with FPL and the Treasure Coast Regional Pl Planning Council to hold a summit and begin to prepare our communities in a uh, seven-county region for uh, implementation and deployment of electric vehicles. Let's, um, let's, I think there are probably uh -huh. a lot of people who don't know what the Regional Planning Councils are or yeah. do. So yeah. can you give a brief description of how many are there in Florida? There are several. There's several. I mean, you know, we've got <laughs> South Florida, there's Treasure Coast. Yes. And yes. there's, I think, probably Southwest and blah, blah, blah. So what do they do? Basically, our regional planning councils are planning and public policy agencies. And we try to work with local governments, private partners, nonprofit organizations. And our mission is to identify long-term challenges and opportunities facing South Florida. Uh, we, yes, Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council is north of our region, and they cover I believe Palm Beach, Martin, Martin County, St. Lucie, St. Lucie Indian River. And ours is Monroe, Miami-Dade, and Broward County. Yes. And um, I sit on the South Florida Regional Planning Council. It meets once a month in, in the South Florida region. And it's city commissioners of the three counties. It's right. county commissioners. It's private residents who are appointed by the governor. Right. Um, and both all three counties pay dues to the South Florida Regional Planning That's Council. That's correct. Okay. That's uh, unfortunately, the governor um, vetoed the money for the South Florida Regional Planning <laughs> Council in, in the budget this year, so things are kind of tight. But so. You got, and I know that we've been partnering, we're trying to partner more and more with Treasure Coast. Yes. Because we're so compatible Absolutely. geographically and community interest wise. Absolutely. And I think we're all seeing over the last few years this push to have partnerships in regional efforts. So the time is here and electric vehicle implementation is one way that we're going to pull this off together. It's, um, it's a pretty neat thing. So who, it is exciting. Who was invited to the summit? We have uh, a lot of folks here from private industry, both lar large and small companies, that are interested in flexible fuels, electric uh, vehicles, and the infrastructure that it's going to take. We also have lots and lots of local government people. I, know, I saw lots I of know, Brown County license I was plates very pleased. <laughs> yeah, and, we, and, and because um, we tie in our efforts with the Sustainable Community Initiative that Treasure Coast and South Florida Regional Planning Council were involved in right now, we uh, did want to pull in all seven counties from both of the councils. So we have people here today from as far north as Stewart, maybe even further north, mm -hmm. and lots of folks from Palm Beach. I believe someone from Key West even is here wow. this morning. Yeah. Well, I hope he's staying here yeah. at the Marriott and giving his tax dollars to Broward County at least for the <laughs> night, or she. Um, and is it it's all, an all-day summit? It is an all-day summit. Uh, we were able to find speakers that are very knowledgeable about infrastructure and the electric vehicles that you see here from all over the country. We have a speaker later this morning from General Electric who will be very enlightening. We, uh, I believe right now what's going on inside are discussions with some of the major car manufacturers, Nissan, uh, General Motors, and so forth. And w behind us, mm -hmm. we have one of, I guess, the focuses of today's summit, or yes. the focus of today's summit, yes. and this is a... It's a Nissan LEAF. It is all electric. My understanding is that 
we can go out and purchase one of these within the next week or two, hopefully. <laughs> this so is, by the way, not a exciting. commercial for Nissan. And <laughs> I don't want anybody to think that we're, you know, because we've got a Chevy over there. So Well, and actually, my understanding is that all major car manufacturers, every one of them, is coming out with models now that are either hybrids or all-electric uh, models. And later on, we're going to take a look um, around the vehicle and inside the car, because you'll see it's a real car. Yeah. Not a not a go kart, which is I think people think that you know the electric vehicle isn't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doesn't have the Sirius radio, the satellite radio, you know, the air conditioning and all the bells and whistles that regular cars have. Right. So how does it work? Well, I, mean, I have like driven I have dryer? not driven an all electric yet, but I can tell you that they're very very quiet. You just turn it on. You can barely even hear the motor going. A car like this, don't forget, there's no oil changes needed. Um, the maintenance on it is very minimal. And uh, so right now the initial price may look a little steep, but the savings that you would enjoy over time are really significant. And what, what makes this, this is, a hybrid is a car that's part electric and part gas? And yes. this is all electric. All electric, yes. So how does it work? <laughs> no. You know, there's a couple of different ways to charge this car up right now. And I, I would say that one of them is called level one, and you could actually hook it into an outlet in your home, to hook it into your bedroom or bathroom, and it will take many hours to charge up. Mm -hmm. Overnight is the best method mm -hmm. with that. There's a quicker charger called a level two, and that one mm, would take probably about three or four hours, much, much quicker. And, uh, so you can actually plug this in to a a home charge, uh, yes. a plug in, like yes. in your garage. Right. Now the home. level two charger might take an electrician to pay you a visit at your mm -hmm. home, depending on how new your home is and the you know the whole setup uh, of your house. Well, when we show you the electric cord, none of us have mm -hmm. electric outlets that look like that in our house. But like a norm, I mean, it's just a normal electric current right. that charges this vehicle. Right. right. And and you don't hear anything when you turn it on. I don't think we're going to hear much <laughs> of anything. No, <laughs> it's it's just a very simple um, concept actually, and. Uh, it's not the first time that our country has tried to make electric vehicles work. Mm -hmm. We do think that this is the time when they will really take hold because a lot of different factors. Our environment is ready, our economy is ready, the federal government has definitely got some goals to put, I think it's like a million electric vehicles on the roads by the year 2015. That's very ambitious. Wow, that's not very far away. And Florida is, and it's probably primarily because of South Florida. Uh, I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> but Florida is definitely what, what is termed in marketing as a hand raiser. We have a lot of interest on the part of our drivers in electric vehicles and other ways to reduce petroleum usage. So how far could you go on a charge? I'm going to say I believe it's up to 100 miles on a charge, yeah. So right now you're looking at city driving and right. not long, not long, but you could drive to and from work. Most people oh, could definitely. drive to and from work on a charge. Oh, definitely. But, and, and I guess, um, we, we need, do we need to take a break? We do already? Okay, we're going to take a break and then mm -hmm. we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more about 21st century technology and moving us into the 20, more into the 21st yeah. century. We'll do you want to talk at all about our grant that we got? Absolutely. Okay, We'll, cool. we'll do that when we get back. <laughs> we'll come right back. <laughs>